What's going on YouTube? West Hobbies RC. So today we are back with part two of the SAB Nitro Raw 700 rebuilt. So in this part, we are going to get the tail section done and get all that stu good stuff done. So we got the boom laid out here. We got our tail pulley, our tail unit, and then we have some parts, revised parts. So on the Nitro model, on the older kits, they came out with a retrofit kit. And that's what this is right here. And the retrofit kit is the bell crank lever, a boom, or tail belt, which I already put in, as well as your clamp. So if you go through the kit here, it explains important update, optional update, optional and important. So this frame spacer is also part of the retrofit kit. So the original owner did not do the belt, which the belt was going bad anyway. So perfect timing to throw the new belt in, which I already did. The bell crank lever, which is revised three millimeters, and this boom clamp, which is an optional, but I'm gonna go ahead and toss that in as well. And then of course, this is just for tightening the boom. And then we are going to rebuild the tail grip, put new thrust bearings in, because there's a little bit of grit there. So let's so get started. First thing we are going to do is replace thrust bearings and tail. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this guy apart here, and then we will start the re we're rebuilding and taking apart. I just wanna to touch on something. Get yourself a little Tupperware dish, alcohol, and clean all your screws and, and washers and everything that could have Loctite on them or dirty. Soak them, rub them around, kind of shake it, and you can see all the particles in there. That's all the old Loctite and retaining compound just coming off. And then take the screws out one by one, clean them with a paper towel, and then they are ready to get the new Loctite and now go back. Now it's time to assemble the tail. We got our new thrust bearings right here. Already went ahead and preloaded them. Micro lube, of course. Already went ahead and re retaining compound our ball ends on. So that's all done. Everything's been cleaned, screws cleaned. So our first step is going to be taking a tiny bit of micro lube we are going to put a little bit on our tail shaft here just to give it a little bit of lubrication we are going to slide our tail shaft through our hub here so now we got the shaft in our next step is going to be adding our little shims so our spacers on each side now the manual says add a spacer and a shim the tail was assembled without the shim so i'm assuming it was it was tight already so if your tail assemble it you have any kind of play pull the grip back off and add a shim but i'm going to go ahead and say since this tail was already assembled we are not going to need that shim but we will check so now the first thing is first you're going to take your smaller id out of the thrust washer or bearings and then you're going to take your thrust bearing itself and of course open side again open side towards the actual hub then you're going to take your larger id slide that guy down they're already pre lubed up with micro lube grab your next shim your bigger one throw that guy on there now we're going to load the thrust bearings into the actual tail grip just like that and then we are going to slide the entire assembly down onto our tail shaft very gently very carefully so that way we don't pop any of the thrust bearings out kind of go ahead push that guy down and then we are going to take our screw it is a two and a half millimeter screw. We're going to go ahead, add our Loctite, and run our screw down. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other side now. We're going to do the same thing. Add our washer. Set that whole assembly aside. Let's go ahead and add our Loctite on our screw now because I like to let it run. So what I do is I just take a bead of Loctite, let it go to the length of the screw, set it aside, and it will soak into the threads while we work on our actual uh, thrust bearings so now just to double check this is going to be the larger id so we know that so now we're going to grab smaller id thrust bearing again open side towards the back larger id and shim bigger shim install that whole unit into the blade grip kind of tap it down into place and then we are going to grab our tail hub with our shaft slide that guy down grab our screw that has the loctite that wicked in go ahead spin it all the way down make sure sab is facing up like this grab your next two and a half millimeter driver go ahead and tighten that tail shaft down good and tight so now we should have a nice free tail shaft nice and free nice and a little tight but no gritty so now we can go ahead and install 
Get a little bit of micro lube, throw it on the shaft here. Just a little bit. You don't need a lot. Go ahead, rub it around. And then install your pitch slider. Now remember on the pitch slider, that little S has to face out. So we want that little S out on the ball link. So go ahead, pop this one on. Same on this side, S so facing out. now we're gonna out. go ahead and install the new revised bell crank. Now the difference between the two are the actual screw diameter. So this one on the factory uses a two and a half millimeter screw and bearing and SAB redesigned it for a three millimeter because people were breaking them. So we're gonna go ahead, get this out of the package, get this installed and get our tail. So important done. when installing your little arm here, you wanna make sure that the lip is facing down because that's where your bearing is going to ride and it is going to go into here like this, run your screws from the inside with line. We're gonna go ahead and install the shaft and pulley. So I already grabbed my belt, twisted to the left, so we can double check that by spinning the head clockwise. We should see the top of the belt going towards the back of the model, which is going to spin the tail the correct direction. So what we're going to do now is we are going to Get a little bit of micro lube here and we are going to install the tail shaft. Now we already got our little bell crank base mounted. So we're just gonna take a little tiny bit of micro lube, get it on the shaft here. And we don't wanna get any in this area right here where the actual set screw is gonna go through. So now we know our pulley needs to go this way with the set screw to the left side of the model. So let's go ahead and install the pulley. So we're just going to grab the belt here, slide our pulley in and drop this unit down. We kind of want to set the set screw up so it's easier to work on. We're going to slide the shaft in. Now remember this little indent right here is where our set screw needs to slide into to lock the tail into place properly. So we want to look for that and you can see it in the actual, I know you guys can't see it right now, but when you're working on it, you can see it. Now I already went ahead and locked tight in my set screw. So now I'm gonna hold my tail shaft here and I'm going to do my best not to move anything while I run this down. Now, once you get it close to being tight, you can feel that you're in that groove. So once you get it almost all the way in, back it out a little bit and kind of rotate. You can see, you can feel that it's in there. And as you tighten down, it's gonna lock into the middle. Go ahead, crank that guy down and use a little bit of rubbing alcohol and clean off your Loctite. So now that we're all Loctited down, everything is free and smooth. Always double check as you build. So if you have any binding issues, you can eliminate them. So we already went ahead and assembled our bell crank, which is just our ball links on there. So we're gonna go ahead and slide this up in the helicopter. Now grab your pitch slider and you see that little hole right there is where this is going to sit. So we're gonna slide our screw in and sometimes you have to use another driver to get that little brass piece to kind of center and it'll slide down in there like that. Now I already put some retaining compound on the screw to let it soak, but I'm gonna add just a little bit more and we are going to install this like this. So we are going to line up our ball. We're gonna get the thread started first. So start running it down and then we're going to line this guy up like this. So that way it slides into place. And then we are going to fully tighten this all the way down and we're gonna grab our lock nut. We're going to install that onto the back side, getting it started. And then you're gonna take your socket or your nut driver and finish tightening this all the way up. We got our tail completely together here. We got our blades on and everything is free and smooth and tightened down. So now our next step is to tighten the boom tension, belt tension, and then we can get the push rod on and then we need to mount all of our FBL unit satellites and start wiring. Okay, so you thing. guys have seen me tighten and tension belts on all SAB models, all the raw series is the same. You're gonna take your belt tensioner and you need that screw and you need this pen. So you're basically just going to slide this little guy onto here like this, put your screw in, line it up, use that little doodad there, like this, slide it together, tighten this screw down, this rides here and tighten your belt. Make sure that when you're tightening this down that this screw right here is all the way out, this is pushed in. 
Also a little tip is to put a piece of heat shrink over this screw that goes here so you don't scratch your boom mount up at all. And then now it's gonna be a three millimeter driver to tighten down. So go ahead, snug that down, make sure your two boom clamp screws are loose and then take your three millimeter driver and just run it down, tighten it up and until you get a good tension, make sure that your little lock is in place to hold the tensioner out of the way. We went ahead, we got our boom tightened down, tensioned up. I wanna mount the icon and the satellites, but I want to add this little guy. So when you build it, you can add this little receiver tray or not, the original owner decided not to, but what's really nice is SAB gave you these holes here, so we don't even have to take anything apart. So we can just slide this guy into here and run our screws. It's gonna be three of our screws right here and run them in right from the top. So it'll be one, two, and three. This one over here is not used, as you can see. And then we can mount our satellites onto this little tray here and mount our icon and we can start on wiring this thing. And then we stop to add our tail. Getting ready to mount our icon two HD and our satellites. Little word of advice, little tip, take yourself some rubbing alcohol, clean your surfaces, clean the bottom of your icon real good, wipe off any excess. If you wanna use a lint-free paper towel, you can, I've never had an issue. And then you're gonna do the same to the backs of your satellites, even though they're brand new, it just gives you a really clean bond. And we're going to mount, just like we did on the Puma, we're gonna mount a satellite on top and a satellite on the bottom. That seems to be really good, antennas out the back. So let's go ahead and get that stuff double-sided taped down. Icon's gonna go wires back and we can move on to wire. To note with these satellites is you can put the antenna where you want it. So since we are mounting these guys like this, I want the antennas out the front side. I don't want them out the side. So you take your case apart and just rotate your antenna to that hole. It's, once you pull this loose, it can rotate, goes back, and then you can mount your antennas out the front. So we're gonna have one like this and one under here like this, both antennas. We got our antennas coming out the back, just like that. So now they will both be angled down. The canopy will help hold them like on the Puma. So now we're gonna pull this cover off and let's start wiring so this we're thing. in the middle of covering all of our wires with heat shrink. I wanted to touch on something real quick because I've had this question a couple times. Yes, remove the servo connector when covering the actual wire. So now remember, servo one and three does not get shortened on the raw series. They are the perfect length to run right into the icon or whatever FBL you are running. Servo two does get shortened because this wire runs. So we already cut and shortened this wire. Of course, your rudder servo is gonna get shortened because the rudder servo is gonna run up along the base right into here. And then of course, you're gonna have to make a throttle extension if you're making nitro which we already went ahead. Now, I have a video I'm gonna work on right now that's gonna come out soon on how to crimp the servo ends because I get a lot of questions on that as well on how to crimp your ends. So I'm gonna finish covering heat shrink and continue moving forward. So far, got the throttle servo ran up and around. Of course, it's just sitting there. We'll run some double-sided tape. It runs to our servo plug here. Our governor sensor runs up to our servo plug that's gonna be here. So now we need to make up another extension to go from here to here and it's gonna go into channel two. Elevator servo is done and shortened. Main power running through. So now tail servo and onboard glow needs to be made. And then we can junction this piece here and continue moving. Just went forward. ahead, made up the servo lead for the governor. So that goes into governor port. It'll wrap around this harness nice and neatly, plug right in. Our rudder servo is crimped. I just got done making a video on how to crimp your own ends, how to make stuff. So that video will probably be out shortly after this one. And hopefully it answers some questions. So let's get that extension on. Let's get this junction. And we still have to wire in our onboard glow. We got our junction piece of heat shrink. We got our elevator servo running into it. Sl put a little slit in there. And then running the also onboard glow wires going on the inside of the frame up. Going through that same slit. And they all come into the back of the FBL unit. So now we need to install this little cover. And the zip ties lock tight everything down. And then do the rudder servo wire, get that double-sided tape down, and then satellite wires, and the wiring is finished. Ahead and finished up all of this wiring. So we have our power wire ran into the little battery box there. We got our satellite wires done, mounted. We got our little side cover put on and zip-tied. So now all that's left, we also got the rudder servo. So all that's left is the onboard glow. So now again, we're running the onboard glow on the inside of the frame. So we have this lead here and this lead's gonna plug in here. It's gonna run up, go right to the glow plug and we're good to go. I'm gonna have to extend this 
and I want to change this JST to a XT30. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. All the wiring will be complete, and then it's icon set up. Completely finished up with our wiring. We got our onboard glow wired up. We got all of our FBL connections, satellites. So now we are going to set up the FBL and then do the tail push rod and we are ready to see this thing finished up and of course mount the muffler we went ahead set up the icon we got everything buttoned up we got our tail push rod on we got our proper setting zero here it's off right now but everything is set in the tail properly everything is working the only issue we are having is the onboard glow the icon is not triggering signal to channel two, so I need to figure okay, that out. Okay, so before we put the canopy on and we test run this thing, I was running into a big issue with the onboard glow not working. Now, it drove me crazy, and I wanted to touch on this just in case some of you have the same issue. So, in the advanced menus here, you're going to go down to servos. Now, when you go to servos, you're going to look, and this is going to give you and two things on this page. Number one. This servo zero dash B auxiliary two channel two, it was turned off. So right here, it said none, no output. And it was showing that in the monitor screens, everything was working, but that was not selected. So once I selected channel two to be a standard servo, everything works like it should on onboard glow. And then the second thing is if you are running uh 1520 servos converted to 760s you have to go to in the mi wizard menu it will not allow you under servo setup to select 760 for cyclic only for tail so go to advanced menus go to servos and here you can select 760 for cyclic and the canopy is installed blades are back on you do have to remove the blades on this model to take the canopy off and on it is a fixed canopy so we have four bolts too short in the front too long in the back muffler is on we have a new os pipe coming but for test flights and setup we're going to use the old protune so now we are ready to go test fly this model so i'm going to end this part off here i want to thank you guys so much for watching this quick little build series such an awesome helicopter so excited to fly it came out so good so i'm going to go fly this thing let you guys go you have a great and amazing day thank you so much for watching give this video a like subscribe take care and have a great day